Horse and chest, homosis reaction. This is the second most deadliest virus on earth. This is my channel, Khuskazat, obviously. Another Khuskazat video. Like I said, you know, before, like this month is just epic. All the great videos are coming out. And the second most deadliest, I guess the most deadliest was like bubonic plague, right? That was the case. I don't know. The second most, what could it be? Second most, I don't know. Influenza? I don't know. Is influenza second most? I don't know. No, influ influenza was like widespread, but it wasn't that deadly, was it? I don't know, but it's going to be fun. Uh, informative at least, not fun, like, because we don't know what kind of topic it's going to be or how dark it's going to get. It'll be informative at least, so let's watch it. Remember, people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. So I know which type of videos to react to more. Check out the reaction. There's a link in the season. And yeah, let's watch it. Few of the monsters that evolution created have been so successful at hurting us as the variola virus, responsible variola virus. for smallpox. Smallpox. The carnage it caused was so terrible and merciless. Oh yeah, smallpox. Why didn't I thought of that? Like that was a big thing, right? Very big thing. But I guess it was like 1970 or 1980, something like that, when it just completely got eradicated, right? And that was like a big. This is like one of the big achievements of science. The people love to bash, you know, scientists and doctors and maybe there is some reason for that. But I guess just because of a few bad apples, you can just condemn whole thing. Uh, so, you know, this is like big achievement science because smallpox was a big thing for thousands of years. People died because of it. Like, yeah. That it compelled humankind for the first time to act truly globally. It was one of the greatest winds of our species yeah. over the ancient powers of nature, all made possible by... Cows. Cows. What did cow do? Variola is a virus, a tiny machine that only seeks to reproduce itself. Evidence of it has been found in Egyptian mummies and in writing from India and China as old Ooh. as 3,000 years. 1,300 oh, yeah. years ago, smallpox killed up to a third of Japan's population. Third. By the 1600s, it was one of the major causes of death worldwide. In late 18th century Europe, it killed 400,000 a year. Every third person who went blind did so because of this virus. Even in the 20th century, a hot second ago in history, it still killed at least 300 million people. Smallpox is 300 an million that returns over and over and over again, killing In 20th century, 300 million is a big number, man. Now there's 8 billion, which is a little, but no, the you know, population blew up very recently. Like in 20th century, 300 million is a big fucking number and disrupting societies. How could variola be so incredibly deadly for so long and how could we have forgotten its horror so quickly? In 2023, there are only two laboratories left where the living virus is officially stored for research in Kotsova, Russia and Atlanta, USA. Which is certainly a good idea because what could possibly go wrong? Let's say that through an unfortunate series of events, the virus got out and you got infected. What would happen to you? Look, I get it. Like, for research, you have to do the most unnecessary shit ever. You don't know where the breakthrough is going to be. Breakthroughs might be at the most unlikely place ever. You can never know that. But still, just like, oh, man, small fox eradicator, why are you having that? Right? Like, Russia right now, let's just say it's like in aggressive mode. And what if it escalates and even Russia becomes, you know, uh, unstable. And somehow the, the lab become compromised. Like, that's what we want. How smallpox kills. Variola is highly infectious and catches a ride in small droplets you breathe in. Immediately, it begins to infect the cells that line your throat and starts killing them to cause chaos. Why? To trick your body into giving it a lift. Whenever cells in your body die a violent death, right, your immune cells immediately stream to the site of infection to help yeah, right, out. Cells. In this case, that backfires horribly. As immune cells begin cleaning up dead cells, eating viruses and killing infected cells, variola infects a crucial cell of your immune system, your dendritic cells, intelligence cells that gather information and leave the battlefield to get help. They enter your lymphatic system, a yeah. highway network that spans your entire body and connects hundreds of immune bases. By the way, lymphatic system is, as far as I remember, its main job is to remove waste or waste-like thing. Like if you have one of your tissue has a really too much fluid in, let's just say there is like a swelling or inflammation, right? Because of anything, it's you know lymphatic system's job to remove excess swelling and 
also the white infection with white blood cells. That, that's where the white blood cells come from. That's why whenever you start to get feel sick, like you might have a, some kind of a germ infection or whatever, you can feel something here and you can feel, you know, uh, you know, big like, uh, I don't know, cyst type things. But it's not cyst, it's lymphatic nodes that are just swelled up because there's a lot of white blood cells fighting things there. So that's the, basically when you have strep throat and th things like that, infection of the throat, you will have lots of lymphatic nodes here, two, three at least, I don't know. So you can basically think like, oh, there you go, I have a strep throat or something. In these bases, your heavy defenses are activated and should be the last place an enemy would want to invade, but Variolo wants to get here. For it's about like, 12 days, Michael the virus quietly infects civilian and <laughs> immune cells, jumping from cell to cell, infecting more and more of them. At some point, a critical threshold is reached and variola starts its attack for real. Mm. Millions of viruses use the lymphatic highway to spill into your blood and organs, infecting your whole body. Suddenly, variola is everywhere. But despite this global attack, your adaptive immune system is struggling to wake up. Your immune cells look for and use critical transmitters called interferons to mobilize the body against viruses. Interferons, as the name suggests, interfere, significantly slowing down virus infections, but also quickly activating millions of antivirus weapons. By the way, uh, sometimes it feels like our uh, immune system is kind of slow to pick up. And there's a reason behind that, because if it weren't that slow, if it was just like too quick to trigger, right it would do more collateral damage than it would actually solve issues so we would be fucked constantly so there's a reason but still every time like there's a reason why doctors like prescribes all these antibiotics and things like that because when your body reacts your normal infection will probably fight away but it takes a time like it, it will take a week or something before it can even do something meaningful and by that it's just like too much you will be like sick in your bed like you know 103 degrees fahrenheit or something your temperature or more but variola is able to deactivate interferons, which stuns the antivirus side of, of your course. defense system. Why not? Other systems would usually help, like the complement system, a sort of mobile minefield that can destroy viruses. Tetris. But variola manages to shut this down too. What? And so with so little everything. resistance, variola spreads everywhere and infects billions of your cells all over your body. Among the infected are your capillaries, the smallest blood vessels in your body, which die in great numbers. All this death activates... Yeah, I think lymphatic nerve systems are slightly bigger than cap capillaries. Why am I always having a hard time saying that? It's not as big as arteries, but art arteries, arteries. It's not big as arteries, but more than that, yeah. ...cell that you really don't need right now, but that's attracted by death, the neutrophil. Normally, an efficient killer of invaders, great and small, it's not very effective against smallpox. And even worse, neutrophils fight by vomiting deadly chemicals which kills even more of your cells. On top of that, they order inflammation, fluids streaming from your blood vessels into your tissue. All over your body, as first millions, then billions of your cells die, you get a rash that only gets worse and worse. Pus and cellular junk fills it up as your body swells up with hundreds of lesions all over your skin and inside, even on your organs. By the way, that is gross, obviously. But when you, when you're something like science, what is gross? <laughs> let's talk about it. Let, let's let's break it down. Ninety nine percent of things will not be gross, but there will be there something will be answered there, right? So uh, this kind of a pus. What is pus? Right? Pus is mostly white blood cell. Some of them is dead tissue. Like let's just say, like if this is a warfare, it's like dead equipment or something, right? And obviously viruses, jumps, whatever. Some of them is that too. So basically when you see pus, that's like a battlefield. Like if, 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 you some, if there's a camera seeing from a certain distance, like let's say three feet away, imagine that as a satellite and your body being a earth. Pus is like literally seeing through satellite a battlefield, right? Where everything's going on. That's what pus is. Like there's a fight going on there. Obviously, it's going to smell everything because it's a dead tissue and also germs, viruses and things like that. But it's mostly white blood cell, literally your immune system fighting back. All filled with billions of variola viruses. Now, the critical phase begins. As you fight for survival, you burn up in a high fever. Thousands of battlegrounds drain your blood of fluid that streams into your tissue and organs. Blood clotting appears all over your body, while floods of toxins from dead cells build up and can cause organs to fail. Your lungs fill up with fluid, making it harder and harder to breathe. One of two things happens now. 
Either your immune system wrestles back control, heavy weapons have been dispatched, killing infected cells, cleaning up the thousands of infections one by one, killing variola wherever it can be found so you can slowly begin to recover. The immune system will forever remember variola, making you immune forever. Or you die, Probably overwhelmed that. by the infection and your immune system's panicked reaction to the body-wide infection. About a third of me. The way it just uh, you know stops a lot of important immune system functions. The moment immune system really fights back, it's like kind of too late. Like pneumonia has set in. Like there's literal fluids inside your lungs, which is like oh, if your body's you know fight back of that, your lungs are gonna get damaged a lot, right? Really lot. But like if you survive that, by after that point, it will be always be hard for you to breathe or something shit like that. A whole your body is filled with pus and just basically swelling, which is not good. Like. Pus is like I said, it's like white blood cell literally fighting back. But when it becomes too much, it's like collateral damage, right? Like fighting becomes too much, like everything's destroyed at that point. People who contract smallpox don't survive. And if you survive, you're very likely branded by scars and may even lose your eyesight or hearing. For thousands of years, this terrible disease ravaged the world, leaving eyesight? death and destruction, traumatized and maimed survivors. Until one day, humanity said, enough. By the way, I said thing, that's just fucked up, right? Like there are lots of infection that, uh, you know, infects your, you know, eyes and everything around it, coronas or whatever, right? And obviously trying to fight that, like always, collateral damage, your eyes will develop scars. And the way your eyes are built, once it have a damage, it will just increase the damage, therefore, right? So if you don't become completely blind, you'll essentially be blind. Like after, the, you'll be blind enough that, you know, you, you probably won't understand anything. That's just fucked up. Like, all we are is like our three senses, like eyes, mouth, and ear, right? If, if you really imagine, like, what if you didn't have eyes, ears, and mouth? What, like, at that point, what do you even feel, right? Like, it's really hard to understand the world. Like, I don't even, you know, are there people who don't have all three of that senses? Because that's just fucked up. How do you understand anything? Right? If you don't have ears, you can understand sign language through your eyes. If you don't have eyes, you can hear things from your ear. If you don't have both of them, at least you can talk and just, you know, uh, understand, you know, explain something. If you don't have none of them, you can't say anything that, you know, that's on your mind. You can't understand anything because you don't know anything. How are you going to understand anything if you can see or hear it? Like how anybody is going to make you understand? There are people, you know, obviously, the, you know, the uh, deaf people have that kind of, a, you know, dotted thing uh, that they can read, actually. But even that, you need to learn that. Now you're going to learn that if you, don't, if you can't hear or see. Like how is somebody going to teach you that? So that's just fucked up. Why don't we have smallpox anymore? Smallpox is one of the worst diseases humanity has ever known. A murderous, family-destroying, life-ruining monster. There was nothing you could do for the infected, but people noticed that if you survived, you were immune. Hmm. So out of desperation, they came up with the dangerous practice of variolation. Oh. Take scabs from an infected person that had a mild case of smallpox, let them dry out, and grind them to a fine powder. Then blow the powder up the nostril of a patient or scratch their skin with it. If things went well, they only got a mild version of smallpox and gained immunity against the disease. Variolation probably worked because it introduced variola in a part of the body the virus wasn't prepared for, disabling most of its nasty tricks. <laughs> Some form and of because vaccine. the inoculation was left to dry out, that damaged the virus so it couldn't cause the full disease. Yeah. Unfortunately, 2-3% to of all patients still died because they got the smallpox or suffered other diseases as a result of treatment. Mm. Still, smallpox was such a horrible and to some degree unavoidable disease that people took the risk for themselves and their children. Damn. Variolation spread around the globe while variola continued to kill millions. It's like first vaccine or something, damn, or something. The virus only became a real possibility when scientists realized that it wasn't necessary to variolate with the real smallpox disease, but much safer to use material from cowpox, a variant that affected, surprise, cows. A truly revolutionary step, and only a few years later, this led to one of humankind's most outstanding achievements, vaccinations. The innovation was simple. Instead of using the real virus to train the immune system, use a related virus, cowpox, that was only mild but also gave you immunity. Still, it would take another 200 years, countless individuals fighting the monster where they could, delivering vaccines to the most remote places on Earth. All the while, the disease ravaged on, killing over 300 million people in the 20th century alone. In 1966, the World Health Organization decided that humanity had to come together in a final major effort. 
a global smallpox news network based on residents in hotspots was created tackling local outbreaks of the virus. Cases were encircled, vaccines given, preventing further spread. Mm. Smallpox only infects humans, so if we stopped the human transmission chain, we would starve the virus. The last naturally occurring infection was in 1977, and in 1980, just shy of 200 years since the first vaccine was used, smallpox was declared eradicated. Variola. I love how we can basically come together, every single country, and actually do that and track shit like that, which... When you think about it, we would never, th uh, you know, we would never think that humans would ever do that, but we actually did. So why can't we do that about anything else, like poverty and shit, right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying do magic or something, but at least have some kind of a game plan or something, you know, rather than just, oh, that's not my country, why do I care? Scourge of humanity was dead. No more children would be killed by it, no more mothers or brothers or uncles or cousins. It's hard to convey to people around today what an incredible win this was. One of the cruelest, most dangerous monsters that has hunted us for literally millennia was slain by us, apes with pointy needles. Yep. Today, we live in a time of enlightenment. None of us alive today are haunted by the spectre of smallpox. This light is not natural. It was set in the sky by the sheer will of humankind wanting to be safe from the monsters haunting us. But because we live without them, we forget that they ever existed and that they are real that the diseases might reawaken or new ones might be brewing in jungles, wet markets or laboratories yeah. ready to strike us once more. Oh, we forget what an incredible gift vaccines are and how hard we had to battle to get them. We are still protected by the light, but it's cooling each and every but, day. But yeah, I mean, you know, doctors weren't completely 100% right about the current vaccine and there was some uns unforeseen side effects so obviously it's all propaganda and all doctors are you know wrong aren't they like what kind of bullshit is that like okay doctors got some shit wrong so what <laughs> i mean vaccine like that's the best thing you have what is the alternative vaccine nothing just what just sit in the corner and just you know pray or something I don't understand, like, you know, this is the real thing in the world today. Like, if you have 10% of doubt and that becomes real, whole 90% can go screw themselves. Like, do you, can you even weigh pros and cons anymore? Like, what is happening, right? People in Joe Rogan or something, it just comes like, oh, this is, you know, the, you, you see this headline? Like, okay, that's like 10, 15% of things. What about the 85%? You're going to discount that? Day, and we owe it to those who will come after us to make sure it doesn't go out. We killed one monster. We can do it again. This video was supported by Open Philanthropy. Yep. Do you want to continue learning about the fascinating world of biology? We've got... Oh, God, this is a similar video than the one that somebody got pissed off about and made a anti kaskazar video, right? Like, he, look at that. He's like, so, support of Open Philanthropy, whatever, those billionaires, and he's making another billionaires are superhero type of video, even though he didn't do any of that shit. I'm very sure they're going to piss off about this as well. But yeah. Right, well, that was the second most deadliest virus on Earth by the channel Kuzgazat. Smallpox. Like, humanity actually got rid of smallpox through vaccine. Like, vaccines are important, people. There are people who actually didn't vaccinate and got, like, measles and polio. Like, seriously? Like, 21st century, we're going to have measles and polio? What is wrong with you? How the fuck do you think you know more than the people who just, you know, studied and studied while you were God, doing God knows what? Right, walking around the park, there was a guy who was studying in you know whole night, overnight, and things. Got 90 plus percentiles on his uh, exams. Became a doctor and scientist, but you know better than him, sure. Alright, well, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.